So we do have some new developments on the uh, trade front with China. The U.S. set to push forward with new tariffs on $16 billion worth of uh, Chinese goods. The big question then is what does that all mean for business here? It's kind of interesting numbers coming out. First of all, Wells Fargo Gallup uh, poll shows U.S. small business owners' optimism hit a 15-year record high. So as those, those new numbers come in, there's a story in the journal, Wall Street Journal this morning, about Trump's tariffs taking their toll on some of the small businesses. So it seems to conflict. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I thought it was interesting to get both of those numbers on the same day. Tim Chapman is here, Heritage Action Committee uh, Executive uh, Chair, uh, Director. Tim, good to see you. Thanks for coming in the studio. Thank you for having me. And I, you know, I was kind of reading both simultaneously this morning and saying that is interesting that in the face of all the tariff small business optimism is at an all-time high. As the journal points out, though, some of these small business owners are starting to feel it. Which side do you believe or do you believe both? Well, I think, I think there's a little truth in both. I think the big, the big picture here is that the optimism is very real. The economy is doing fantastic. Uh, small businesses are hiring. I think the biggest problem small business owners are facing is the fact that they, there aren't enough people to fill the jobs. Totally, I mean, yeah. that's, that is a re, that's a real uh, development right now. And so we see that as a very good sign for the health of the economy. I think there's some anxiety about will they be able to, will, the, will trade have an adverse impact on them in the long term? Yeah. And that's just a question of how long this goes on. So the question is, has their optimism peaked, right? I yeah. Mean, I mean, and because yeah. the survey could be true and probably is true that people felt great or feel great now, yep. is that about to change? I don't think so, because Good. I think that there are other things that are happening. So you've got the tax cuts that have been enacted, and I think those have been extremely helpful to people across the board, and we've been doing a lot of work on that at Heritage and Heritage Action. Mm -hmm. And those tax cuts are impacting not just individuals, but they're impacting the business environment, and they're, they're allowing uh, businesses to have more cash on hand to actually do the things that they need to do. And so I think you'll see more of that going forward. I think the, the more that those that law is allowed to kind of maturate, I think you will see um, yeah. added added growth there. And so I, I think it's a, it's, a good, it's a good thing. I think we just all are going to keep an eye on what's going on with the trade issue, and, and our hope yeah. is that this is, uh, this is not peaked. It definitely adds to costs, right? I mean, yeah. I've talked to some business leaders who uh, one last week described it to me as kind of a nuisance. In other yeah. words, it's not killing the business, but, you know, we'd, have, we'd be making more money. Our profit margins would be better if it weren't for, in this case, it was the steel and aluminum tariffs. But in the journal piece, they talk about really small companies, right? Some summer right. technology base. Some, yeah. I think one was making an electric scooter, motorcycle, or whatever it was. Some of the parts yeah. are coming in from China. So right. if you don't have other options, those are the type of companies they can't stand it for all that long, right? They won't yeah, I it. mean, like we said, we, we at Heritage have always believed in free trade, and we think that there are right. adverse Im, you know, impacts to, um, to, to, to tariffs like this. That said, the president, I think, has done a pretty good job of identifying that China is a very bad actor on the national stage here when it comes to this, and he's doing something about it. So I think we are in a kind of, you know, let's wait and see mode. We don't want this to go on for a long time. We want to get a resolution to this. But in terms of right now how this is impacting, I, I think it's actually impacting politically, it's impacting uh, Republicans and conservatives pretty well because people are, the optimism is there and it still will continue. Well, you know what's interesting about that? We just had the two guests on in the previous yeah. uh, segment and uh, Mustafa, who was representing the Democratic side in all of this, started to talk about trade. And what I started to say at the end, I'll bring it up with you as well, is that the Democrats don't necessarily have an argument to be made on the other side of this. Maybe if Bill Clinton was running, they would or yep. somebody from that kind of ilk in the Democratic yep. Party. But now, to me, they largely agree with the president. So even if there's nobody on the other side of this trade or the other side of this argument on trade, so how does that affect the Middle Yeah, East? you know, I've, I always thought, I think it's interesting. I think one of President Trump's greatest accomplishments is he's made free traders out of the Democratic Party. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so I, but you're right. I mean, I don't think their, their heart is in the, their criticism of the president. And by the way, your side either. The heart, I know yeah. you guys are maybe, but the, the elected officials, I mean, he's like a 90% approval rating with the people in the yep. Republican Party. So it seems like elected officials, even though many in Congress, maybe not all, but many, majority of Republicans in Congress do not approve of the, pub, of the president's trade policies or have it in their careers, but they don't speak out that much against them, not yeah, that much. Uh, well, I think that's right, but I also think that, uh, I think that the, the issue is that they, they recognize that the president has his pulse on something here. I mean, there are real communities across this country sure. that have been hurt by, um, by globalization and, and free trade, um, and there's got to be a way for us to address that as conservatives, and I think we need to do a better job as What's conservatives. What's the way? You to, don't think it's tariffs? No, I, I don't think it's tariffs. So what, what I'm telling you is I think that 
conservatives have to do a better job of actually, you know, maybe it's, it's job training, maybe it's vocational training, apprenticeships, things like that, that can help people move from one, um, one sector to another. And I think there are ways to do that at the state level, not at the federal level, that yeah. would be pretty helpful. Yeah, but the president's hit a nerve clearly with yeah. all of this, and it sells with his base, and, it, and it's, it's working there, even by people, by the way, in that base, maybe that work in industries that might get hurt. I've talked to some of them out on, that is, rallies and other places yeah. that say, yeah, I still support him on this, even if it's going to hurt me individually. So do you think, what is the impact of trade policy in the midterm elections, or is there none? I think the impact is good for Republicans, actually. I think because the president is taking that constituency seriously, yeah. um, I think that matters and that helps him in places like Ohio, where we saw a, a pretty significant uh, victory last night in their ability to hold on to that, that district. You really I mean, think I, it is, even though it was plus 11 for Trump? Going yeah, I actually do. I mean, I think that you know all the, all the tailwinds were with the Democrats there, and that thing was going to the Democratic Party until Trump came in and did what he did. Right. Um, and, and the dynamic you had there was just a lot of people checked out. Out. You had a lot of Republicans who were checked out who didn't even know what was happening in the district until the right. last couple of days. And so I think it was a significant victory because I think at some point Democrats have to start putting points on the board. Um, yes. and so, you know, they, they won in the special election in, in Pennsylvania, but I think they need to put points on the board and they can't claim moral victories over and over again. There's no doubt it's going to be a really tough midterm. Uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do to hold these seats. I mean, Especially in the yeah, House. Yeah. yeah, in the House. I mean, we're, we're getting involved on our end. We're going to support uh, at least a dozen candidates and try to hold these districts. It's going to be tough but it's doable. All right, Tim, good to see you. Good talk. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Appreciate yeah. it.